All right. So I'm going to be talking to you guys today about a medical disorder known as medulloblastoma. So has anyone, first of all, ever heard of medulloblastoma or want to take a guess as to what it is? Go ahead. Yep, that's exactly right. Brain cancer. So um, every day in Canada, 27 people are newly diagnosed with some form of cancer. So obviously you guys, I'm sure, are aware that cancer can affect a number of tissues. Um, obviously today we have brain cancer, but there's also breast cancer, lung cancer, stomach cancer, and the list goes on and on. Uh, back in 2009, cancer accounted for nearly 30% of all deaths across the country. And again, this comes from a multitude of different, of different types of cancer. So uh, what most people aren't aware of is that some cancers are more prevalent in adults and some are more prevalent in children. In the case of medulloblastoma, uh, it's more of a childhood cancer. It's something we see a lot of in kids, but almost never occurs in adults. In fact, it's actually the most prevalent uh, malignant or lethal type of cancer we find in kids. So today we're going to give you a brief overview of what medulloblastoma is, how it's diagnosed, treatment, and management of the cancer. And we're going to do this by walking you guys through a fictional history of a patient. And here's our patient. His name is Ron. So when Ron was 10 years old, he was admitted to the hospital for persistent headaches and severe vomiting. And the first thing that his doctors did was to take an MRI and a CT scan. For those of you guys who aren't aware of what those are, just basically picture giant machines that take images of the inside of your body. So Ron's doctors used these to get an idea of what was going, inside, going on inside of his brain. And what they discovered were these masses, masses right here and here. And that was sort of the first piece of evidence that indicated that Ron had a tumor or some abnormal growth in his brain. The next step was to conduct a few more diagnostic tests and confirm that A, this is in fact a tumor, and B, it is malignant and needs to be operated on. Uh, of course, we wouldn't be talking about this if it wasn't malignant, so Ron was, <coughs> sorry, Ron was scheduled for surgery ASAP. And surgery is the first part in the treatment of medulloblastoma, but it's a little tricky and risky to do because the tumor usually occurs near this section of the brain, the cerebellum. And this is sort of the uh, coordination center of the brain. So it controls all of your movements, so your ability to walk, your ability to your hand-eye coordination, your ability to do that. So uh, when you're operating on this particular part of the brain, you need to be very, very careful as um, you don't want to damage any of the tissues. So the surgeons had to be very deliberate, very slow, and very methodical with their approach in removing the tumor. And uh, unfortunately, in most cases, it's too risky to remove the tumor by surgery alone. So um, almost every patient with medulloblastoma undergoes additional therapy in the form of radiation and chemo. And while this uh, trio of treatment tends to be pretty effective for medulloblastoma, uh, it's not standardized. Uh, the tumor is specific to each patient, so the drugs that are used during chemo and the radiation needs to be tailored specifically to that particular patient. So in other words, what worked for Ron is not necessarily going to work for other patients. So one question that a lot of parents or patients and their parents have is, how did this happen? How did the cancer arise? And the sort of short and simple answer is it's extremely complicated. Uh, medulloblastoma arises through an interplay of several genetic and environmental factors. So pinpointing any particular or singular cause is quite difficult. And it's usually more important to focus on the treatment and the outcome for the patient. So with that in mind, uh, medulloblastoma treatments can have as high as an 80% survival rate, uh, particularly when the tumor is discovered early. And while this number is pretty great, uh, there are a few, well, the treatment itself is quite aggressive, so there's undoubtedly going to be some side effects, uh, particularly from the radiation, because as I said before, we're targeting a sensitive part of the brain, and usually uh, radiation also targets the spine to ensure that the tumor can't spread to the rest of the body. So <clears throat> with that in mind, um, patients usually do suffer severe side effects. Uh, in the case of Ron, his hearing was impaired, uh, he had slight vision loss, and his coordination was also impaired. But um, the doctors were able to sort of manage these conditions as it popped up. For the hearing loss, he was prescribed hearing aids. Um, for his vision, he was given special glasses to correct it. 
and uh, with the coordination he was made to undergo physiotherapy to hopefully restore some of his uh, muscle or <coughs> muscle coordination. And to end on a bit more of a cheerful note, however, uh, Ron did go on to make a full recovery and his cancer has not yet returned. And that is our very brief introduction to medulloblastoma. Uh, in the afternoon, we'll be going over some of the finer details of the disorder. So we will see you guys then. Thanks.